Sincere. Yeah, yeah. What's good? I'm here. Thank you for coming in. This Thank is actually a very, you know what, I'll be real with you. I'm a little fan because you know what, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even say this off cam, but doing my research, because obviously I know who you are. Mm. Like, a lot of people said they're going to be looking forward to this. So, thank you for coming in first and foremost, you know? Thank you for having me, King. Oh, no, thank you. So, I don't want to be generic. You know how people are mm. and ask, but I will have to ask. Yeah. How did we get here? <sighs> Can I be honest with you? A lot of motherfucking trauma. Yeah. A lot of pain. Mm. A lot of self-discovery. Dealing with insecurities. Um, and, and, and my passion and my love and my fire yeah. for what I do. Mm. So why the name Sincere? Simple. See the answer I just gave you? Yeah. It was real genuine and sincere. True yeah. to my word. Okay then. See, this is what I like. See, you know what? You your confidence behind things mm. is incredible. Like, and it's just different to see a rapper, especially in Calgary. Mm. So one of the questions is, have you, was you brought up in Calgary? Yeah. A hundred percent? Yeah. You haven't, you know what? I wouldn't even believe that myself. Nobody does. <laughs> ever no so you, seriously nobody ever does it like a nigga with your energy yeah mostly the drip they see the drip and they're like nah this nigga's not from calgary mm. but so so in terms of rapping and if that's the case how was your come up in calgary in terms of rap it was um man what well, was before the spotify era mm. it's before that era even started exactly yeah you know i got tapes them underground tapes that if you know you know mm. you were there you know i was on the first 10 at 10 there you go, the I first. launched that motherfucker. I had that bitch shaking. <laughs> Ask Benny; he'll tell you about you. He'll tell you about me. Mm. But yeah, it, I mean, it, I mean, it was, it was, it was a lot of fucking. I put in that pain. Yeah. A lot of hours, a lot of late nights in the studio, mm. a lot of 20, 24 hours in a booth, mastering my craft. You know, it was a lot of hours. A lot of hours I logged, putting in time, putting in that pain, mm. mastering my craft, getting better, yeah. discovering my sound. Okay, so what were your inspirations then? Because it's, you know what it is? It's me being a bit ignorant here. You understand what I mean? Mm. Because, you know, you think of Calgary. I don't really think hip hop too mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. So who were your inspirations coming up in terms of, you know, music? It doesn't mm. have to be hip hop because, you know, there's soul and jazz and whatnot. Yes, but, absolutely. Mm. I'll be honest with you. My grandma played a lot of 45s in the crib. A lot of 45s. She's from Jamaica. Mm, That's where my mom from. My mom from Jamaica. Mm. And so I heard a lot of 45s, a lot of reggae, a lot of thick, deep bass shit like that. Mm. Um, rhythm, you know what I mean? Bass, booming, and, and all, all them types of things. And then my mom, honestly, she liked funk. My mom was like more Teddy Pendergrass, Freddie Jackson, yes. Tony yeah. Braxton, you know what I mean? Mm. And so, obviously, um, I was super young in the 90s when hip-hop was really, really coming up like that. But later, more in the 2000s, I would, I would get into rap a lot more mm. and go back to like the golden age and listen and start taking in and learning about the greatest of all fucking time. Like my favorite rap is Biggie, yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> like the, like the, <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions, the Tupac freshest, or Biggie. The freshest. And you know what? It's not Tupac or Biggie for me. Mm. They exist in two different worlds and they produce two different, two different um, stories in, for hip hop. Mm. You, they encourage two different groups. Of people, yeah, you know what I mean, and they both were important. So I hate when people do that. But so wait, wait, now I have to, I have to jump in then. Okay. So who, who's your top five worldwide? Ooh. I can't do that. It's disrespectful. <laughs> no, but it doesn't have to be in an order. No, it's just disrespectful to all the artists that I, all the rappers that I mm. truly, that have truly. If you take one away, mm. one can't exist. It's impossible to answer that question for me. Okay. So you're not even gonna give me a little something. I can't. <laughs> I can't I, I, listen, if I to me, it's like you're gonna hear if you depending on who you are, you're gonna hear certain names. You're gonna hear Nas, you're gonna hear Jay-Z, you mm -hmm. might hear Big Pun, Biggie, Tupac. But I can't there's there's Royce the Five Nine. There's so many that I can't. There, there's I can't. Black Thought, there's so many geniuses. Mm -hmm. J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar is like, what are we talking about? Like So this is one thing I do wanna ask, all right, especially when it comes to Calgary rap. Mm. All right. Do you think that lyricism is lost now <laughs> that's a loaded question <laughs> that's loaded as fuck i know i know it is come I on i know you can what are we doing that. what are we doing <laughs> hey, you but, are you niggas out here gonna be sensitive if i answer this question all right all right let me let me pull it better for you then do you think that um turn up music is more important now than actually the bars it is you know why because there's an agenda in the industry it's, it's, this is how the industry is built to push out a certain type of 
um, message in music. Mm. You understand? That's why certain sounds are amplified. Now, mm. I love our, every artist that's truly passionate and true to this shit. Mm-hmm. I, I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. But there's an agenda to push a certain message out into the world. You understand? Artists like J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, are. there's only a few of them for a reason. Mm. You understand? So, definitely. So, so leading from that then, mm. Blackout. Mm. There we go. Shit. You see how I let it there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you good at what you do. You do this. I can tell. So tell me. Tell me about Blackout. Tell me the process. Tell me the inspiration mm. behind it. Mm. What brought it on? <sighs> Just pain. Mm-hmm. The pain, the collective pain of our tribe, to be honest with you, it was a lot of things. It was seeing artists who aren't black get the opportunities that I think black artists should get. Mm-hmm. I don't care how you feel about that. Um, we pioneered this shit. This shit ours. It was feeling like we always losing. We always losing. It was mm-hmm. dealing with our um, it was dealing with our trauma collectively, understanding like the oppression and the genocide against black life. Mm-hmm. It was understanding our history. Um, and understanding that it didn't start with slavery, that we were kings and queens, that we ruled, black warrior queens, you know what I mean, held down kingdoms, you understand, and held they held they black brothers down, they black kings down, understanding that unity in the black family, that th- that's how our story started, like the divine ones from under the sun, from below the heavens, you understand, and then from that to these motherfuckers enslaving us, you know what I mean, to, to what it is now. You know what I mean? The self-hatred within our communities, us killing each other. Mm. You understand? Us normalizing that. Us being so desensitized to our hurt and our fucking pain that we, we can really kill each other, that we can't coexist in space, that we can't lift each other up and build each other up. Mm. That's what inspired the CP. Okay. See, this is what I like about you. you know? <laughs> You're passionate about your shit. No, no, I actually do. It's, it's, it's nice to see an artist that's actually passionate, like, um, like the other day when they had the dip set versus um, D Lux, yeah, and then mm. Lux, yeah, mm. and then Tyler the Creator was talking about Jadakiss actually caring mm. about the music, and mm. there's not enough people that care about their music anymore. Mm. You seem like you actually care about the message that you're giving out. Well, because it's not just for me to make a quick buck. I'm not just trying to make a. As much as people look at me and they they have their perceptions of me, people don't fucking know me. Mm. Right, and that's why I'm happy I'm having this conversation with you because it gives people a chance to see the real side of me, mm. not the oh this she's a rapper this that and the third. You feel me? Mm. But I it's it's you got to know what your why is. If you don't have a why, I mean, if you just a lot of people just prostitute rap, they just pimping it, they just pimping themselves out mm. for the bay. You understand? They just prostituting their spirit and their energy for fuckery. I understand what's at stake here. You know, I understand. Like when I say, I always tell people this: a black man killed Malcolm X. Do you understand? Do you understand the magnitude of the, the problem we're facing here? So if I don't go out here and educate my brothers and sisters through this, through this, um, through this, th- these gifts that God has blessed me with, because this ain't mine. I'd be lying to you. This shit don't come from me. It come from somewhere else. When I'm sitting there humming and mumbling and shit to a beat, and and then I start flowing, that shit is from the heavens strictly. It's spiritual to me, and for me, it's for my people. It's for my tribe. And like, I, we so fucked up in our minds as a people. We so fucked up in our minds as a people that we, we can't even support each other in what we're doing to uplift each other, to make each other bigger, to make what we're doing bigger, to create more opportunities for the ones coming up under us. We're not setting as OGs. We're not setting the right examples. Like I have to, I have to make the type of music that I make specifically for my black brothers and sisters because we bamboozled out here. But now... Saying that, do you think that, so for instance, you see how I see you, and I've told you, I like this confidence, I like all of this sort of, the energy that you're giving. Mm. Do you think it can be seen as competitive? Absolutely. Because, <laughs> listen, when you have a real nigga in front of you, mm. you know a real nigga. Like when Nipsey was in front of motherfuckers, if you weren't part of that, there's a lot of niggas that felt some kind of way about Nipsey. God bless the dead, because he's not here no more. Mm. You understand? And it may go above and beyond just... A black man killed him. It could be, it could be so much because he was such an intelligent black king that there are the powers that be. If you know, you know, you understand. But it, it, it's of course they intimidated. They have to be intimidated because a lot of niggas are acting. There's a lot of imposter syndrome going on around here. Yeah. But you know what I say? You know, what? All right, let me say this. Mm. Just to tie up what you say, like obviously back home we mm. used to say to people. Why do you want this life? 
these people that come from good homes, yeah, yeah, with with the Vaseline on their lips, yeah, <laughs> with nice families, yeah. But you're rapping about struggle, yeah. And you're not. Why? Why do you want this? Is it? Is it fun? Well, let me tell you. I come from struggle. I might be from Calgary, but my upbringing here and a next nigga from Coral Springs or from um um Tuscany or Hidden Valley, we, we don't. We didn't come up the same way. My father was a pimp, okay. And when my father was a pimp. He fell uh, victim to addiction. Do you understand that? So when my mother gave when my mother gave birth to me, that nigga came in the house high. Okay? Dropped a stack of money on the table. Okay? Put out a line of coke. Snorted that shit up his nose and said, I cannot be here for her. Hold this. That was the starting of my life. My mother was abused my whole entire childhood. Okay? So I, I didn't come up I didn't come up the same way as other niggas. My childhood trauma is a, is, is one of the things that led me to the streets. Mm. I'm not like these other niggas. Oh. So, tell me then. So, with your struggle itself, because you know what, like I said, I believe you. Mm. You understand what I mean? When it comes to Calgary mm. and the culture in Calgary, is there a culture in Calgary? I think there is. I think what we're really, I think there's certain, there's certain individuals that are really trying to create that, mm. like yourself. And like ten at ten, and like people, there's certain people that are trying to create something. I just think um, the politics, the politics is it, it creates a lot of obstacles. Yeah. For us trying to create space together, so. No, I hear that. But do you think so? What can improve then? You as an artist in the city, because you're from here as well. Mm. What can be done to to make people actually take Calgary serious in terms of hip hop? Mm. Rap, anything like that. Amplify the real niggas. I like no offense. Like you, you got a lot of niggas that they come from like a good fucking home, a good home, and they on tracks talking some trap shit. It's confusing, nigga. Like you got pretty, you got pretty hair. You get your haircuts done at you know, some high end salon. Salon, your shit go like this. You know, good and goddamn well, your parents paying for all your fucking mastering all your shit. Your brother's paying for it. You can't, like, you're not, you, you, they amplify, this is hip hop. Mm. This is for real nigga. This is a real nigga sport. But you amplifying weirdos. You amplifying the voice of weirdos. So who's the, if that's the case, who's the top five in Calgary then? Mm, Dylon, 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 <laughs> Dylon. <laughs> you're not going to tell me no? Come on, bro. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Listen, I love the city. I love all you niggas. Kisses and hugs. All right. So, have you done any collaborations in the city? <sighs> I have, not with rappers. I no? stopped I, years ago. I I made a decision. I'm not collabing with these niggas no more. What? Why not? Because I would get on song with niggas and they would get in their feelings. A lot of times, niggas wouldn't release the song because they would be sitting there like, "Oh, I can't put this out. She killed me on this." Like, so wait, so, no, 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 no. So let, let me ask you this then: <laughs> Do you think you're top five in the city? That's a come on. That's a loaded question. No, do you think you are the top? Nigga, I'm top one. Yeah. I'm one. I'm I'm the motherfucker that every motherfucker mad at. You niggas know it. <laughs> you niggas know it. When they say who's that nigga in every single room, Sinzir's name comes up. But but that, don't let me. Don't think it's ego. I love everybody, every rapper out here, and I can name some talented niggas that are really doing their thing. K the Chosen, A Y E. K Riz, T Fanny. Um, I can name a lot of people that are talented as fuck mm. in their lane doing what they're doing. So it's not no, it's not no shit like that. But you gotta feel like you're the best, and I'm the best. There you go. So, so what's next then? So we've released the EP. It's getting good reception. Mm. Are we getting videos? Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna get a video for Shake the Building. That's the first single. Yeah. Um, movie. Yeah. Fucking movie. Like mo like. You ain't never seen no shit like most rap videos. The nigga pull his bends up. He he have his nigga on the side. You know, look at my chain. Like he might have a girl. Like two girls. Like or they're in the parkade with the bends again. Like or they're in the garage with the bends. Like shit's so cliche. So this I'm I'm proud. I'm I, I say that to say this because I'm proud of this this visual for Shake the Building because it's a fucking movie. There's a storyline behind it. You gonna feel something in your spirit when you see this shit. Okay. And what can we look forward to in twenty twenty two? 
the biggest year of my motherfucking career. And this year was big. 2021, we hit Complex three times. That yeah. shit's unheard of. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Celebrate your wins. Anything. We got to. Like, I, honestly, I say this to motivate people, though. I'm not saying it on no ego shit. I'm saying it because despite... I Listen, I get a lot of pushback. I get a lot of pushback and a lot of times from my own people, mostly from my own black people. I get pushback. I'll be honest with you. It's not, my people don't support me like that. It's usually white kids. You know what I mean? I get a lot of pushback, but I, I, I need every artist to understand that no matter what pushback you're getting, no matter what pushback you're getting, if you're consistent and you're persistent and you believe in yourself, skies, there ain't no limit. Let me not even say sky's the limit. There ain't no limit. You can achieve greatness. So when I say things like that, when I say things like, like Obi Trice stood in front of the stage and watched a nigga perform, got in a fight with, a, with someone in the audience and still stood there and watched me perform. You understand? When I say I open for classified, legend, Canadian legend. Understand? I went on stage before him. It was K-Riz, it was me, and it was classified. And when I say classified stood on the stage, Beside mm. the stage mm. to watch me perform. Do you understand? It says it speaks volumes to who I am as an artist. And, I, and I, if I listen to every nigga that said you weren't gonna be shit, you wasn't gonna do shit, I would never, I would never get to these feats. So mm. I say that to say, yo, don't ever let nobody fucking stop you from achieving greatness. So my last question then, and it will be one that's just a bit more, you know, I wanna come on. Why do you think? there's not many black female rappers that's actually coming out of the city? Hmm. It's a loaded question, I know. But why do you think? I think a lot of it is because women who are not black get, get the opportunities that, <laughs> that sisters should get. And so it discourages a lot of young, mm. young queens from wanting to come out in the field and really shoot the shit. And I can't, I can't like, speaking for myself, like... And I met, I met, I've only met a couple black female rappers. Mm. You know what I mean? I know one that left the city. <laughs> I know one that left, I forgot her name, but. I think she's from the UK. There's one that, I've, yeah, I think there's one. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember the name, but I think we're talking about the same person. And she was fucking fire. You know what I mean? But mm. she left the city because it's like, what are we talking about? Like, there, and a lot of it too is like, just in general, there's the opportunities are kind of like, it's almost like, it's almost like you got to sell your soul for an opportunity. Like, because there isn't, there's just not very many opportunities for us. Mm. So one, that makes us feel like we have to be at each other's necks for this one opportunity. You understand? And yeah. it, they create separation and segregation between us. And it's after, it just gets annoying, like, having to deal with that. Like, to be honest with me, I want to coexist with all my sisters and all my brothers. Yeah. If it was up to me... I'd be like, yo, let's let let's build. <laughs> like, no part, like yeah. nobody's <laughs> there. Like, like let's, let's something for us though, something that's ours. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where it doesn't. We can we, not saying that we're excluding any other, you know, mm. nationality or anything like that. We just saying like, this is ours. We have something for us, and there's not enough of that. So unfortunately, the females just leave. They just dip. Will come eventually. At home, we have the Brits. Like you guys have the Ju Junos. Yeah, Junos. we have the Junos. Yeah. But at one point, we said we want something that's ours. Yeah. So we got the Mobiles Music of Black Origin Award. Okay. That's ours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that would benefit here in Calgary. Yes. You know? To show the arts, to show rap, soul. It could be anything, but just people be proud of it. You know? Yes. Yes. But we it will need come. That. We it will come. I'm look. I'm optimistic. And that's one of the things. That, that's another reason why I do what I do because I want to. I want to change the kind of the culture here, for the next generation. Mm. We can't just have one perspective. That's so limiting. We have to have. We have to be able to allow a lot of people to bring their ideas forth and forward and exist and bring because you, we're all divine spiritual beings. Mm. You understand? We all have something to fucking give, the, this the community. But if we don't allow each other to coexist, if we always fucking. This is only mine. Yeah. Only I can do this. It's so limiting. It's so limiting. And, and you, as much as, that's why the culture here is, you ask one person, what's the hip hop culture like here? They're like, huh, you know, so, you know, it's all right. Next person, what culture? What are we talking about? And it's always been that. It's been years now. There's a lot of motherfuckers that came before me, that came before, that been, that put in pain. 
that were passionate and that really did this. A lot of the old heads that rapped in Calgary, mm. you know, they, they put in a lot of pain trying to develop this scene. Like, you know, Dragonfly Empire. You know, Tariq and them been doing this for like 15 years. 17 years. Cosm and, and Tariq been doing this. Mm. You know what I mean? And they don't... Nah, I'm not going to say they don't get the, the respect that they deserve because I can't speak for them. But to me, they're fucking legends. If you do your homework, so but if we don't, if we don't create the spaces and put the and educate the people and let people know this shit, they ain't gonna know. Bro, but you know what? I say this. This has been one of my most interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of my most interesting interviews. Now you've kept it, and I like, like I've said the whole thing. I like your energy, and Appreciate I you. genuinely do believe that you've got more to do. Mm. Like not more to come. You've got more to do. You understand what I mean? Mm. And people will hear about you, but thank you for coming in. Yo, I appreciate you, King. Thank you for having me. This was fucking amazing. Done. Young black babies lacking embrace from the worst circumstances, so it's hard to elevate the mentality as of late. These niggas hating, they hate. Hell on your face, you are the monster. You